Thanks again for tuning in to Atlanta Live. So honored to be here. Glad you're joining us. I'm one of your hosts, I'm James Howard. I'm Regina Howard. And again, we are so glad that you have tuned in and you're joining us tonight. I believe that God is going to say something. And I say God's going to say it. He's using us and our guest, but he's going to speak to your life right where you are right now. We have some amazing guests. Uh, we're going to be talking to a Dove Award winner, uh, Joseph Haberdink. He's going to be joining us. And uh, Daryl Sparrowman and Lloyd Fields, they're going to do a skit that I promise is going to bless you. It's going to be phenomenal. But as always, you know it's not about us, of course, but it's about God. It's about motivating, encouraging, and uplifting you, our viewers. Right now we're going to go to the music ministry, Nikita Marie singing, I Believe. Come on, I know y'all at home watching, but I need y'all to rock with me. Come on, hey. Say, I believe in me. That's the name of this song. It says, I can do anything. Come on, I believe in me. It's your declaration. Hey. Woo. When I wake up in the morning and I look up, I just think up for another day. I know there's something so special and you about me, dreaming all night about my future life, it's hard to be still, when I feel excited about all the dreams I fulfill, hey, I live my life purpose go, if one door closed, you got another, another's gonna open up,
Everybody, welcome back. You know, sometimes uh, you get to talk to somebody with a remarkable testimony uh, and things that God is doing in their lives. And I um, have the honor of talking with uh, a gentleman today, Grammy nominated uh, for his album, A Change is Coming, and just happens to be the Dove Award winning singer, songwriter, for the Southern Gospel Album of the Year at this year's 52nd Annual GMA Dub Awards. He has an awesome testimony, and I'm honored to talk to him. Please welcome to the show, national recording artist Joseph Haberdink. Hey, bro, how you doing? Man, I'm doing good. Thank you so much for having me on. I was telling you before we went on, but I'll tell the people, please forgive me. I'm, I look like a normal person today. I'm riding around <laughs> in my car getting... Aaron's done, uh, but I'm so grateful to be on. Thank you so much for the opportunity, and uh, thank you all for what you do there in Atlanta. Oh, uh, thank you for joining us, and well, that's the best way to do an interview. I've been wanting to do the the car interviews, almost like uh, the karaoke sing-alongs. But anyways, getting to what you're doing right now, uh, number one on the charts, religion isn't working. Talk to us a little bit about being an artist what it means to have your project number one and the longevity and what God has done to promote you to this level. You know, it's very, um, it's very humbling because, you know, when I was a kid growing up in Dayton, Ohio, all I ever wanted to do was sing gospel music. And um, as I've gotten older and gotten to live out my dream, you know, I've watched God's favor and his blessing in my life to the extent that I never dreamed. You know, I never dreamed I'd, I'd be nominated for two Grammy Awards. I, I never dreamed I'd win a Dove Award. I, I never dreamed any of this stuff. I just I just wanted to sing. Mm. And uh, everything else that came with it was just kind of like the icing on the cake. And so to say that it's been a, a humbling and, and a grateful experience would be an understatement. I just, I love so much what I get to do. And I, uh, you know, I just got home last night from Fort Worth, Texas, actually yesterday morning. I leave tonight for Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and it's a crazy life, you know. I mean, we're constantly going, and sometimes you have to do an interview in the car, you know. But it's, 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 it's what I always wanted to do, and it's, it's, I'm so grateful and, and honored that I get to do it. It makes it easy when it's something that you love and something that you want to do and have always have wanted to do. Talk to us a little bit about uh, your testimony. Um, it's been on all different types of media, uh, Billboard magazine, CCM magazine, different media networks, uh, so our listeners can find out a little bit more about who you are as a person. Yeah, so I grew up in the church. Um but I was raised around addiction. Uh, my brother was a, a drug addict and uh, I always resented my brother for that. You know, I just, I didn't understand it. And uh, as I got older, his life got worse and worse. All my dreams started coming true. And I remember one night my mom called me and um, she's a single mom and she asked me if she, I would pray for my brother. And I, I was so tired of, of praying with no answer. And I asked God, I said, would you please take my brother's addiction away and give it to me? because mm. I can handle it better than he can. And that was probably the most arrogant prayer I've ever prayed in my life. And, and don't get me wrong, I don't think God gives people addictions or anything like that. But I do believe that God, in his sovereignty, allows things to happen to draw us closer to him. And um, Not too many months later, I got an ulcer on the back of my throat, got introduced to prescription drugs, and I got hooked. And uh, I was uh, taking 10 to 12 hydrocodone or oxycodone within three three years of that. And uh, my throat got better, the ulcer went away, but I was hooked and I couldn't quit and ended up losing my job singing with a, a group called the Perry's. I've been with actually from Dahlonega, not too far from there and mm -hmm. um, lost my job and checked into rehab and I thought I was done singing. And then these churches kept asking me after I got sober, they kept asking me to come sing and tell my story. Yeah. That's all I did. I just yeah. came and told my testimony and, and, and sang wow. and God kind of built our ministry on uh, my brokenness and, and what he's done in my life, my recovery and my, my restoration. And uh, it's been an amazing thing to watch how God can could use uh, the, my uh, restoration from my addiction to build this ministry into what it is today. And I'm just so, 
so grateful for that. It's amazing how sometimes uh, when you talked about you, the prayer that you asked God to take the addiction away from your brother and give it to you, um, but it's amazing how God and his sovereignty can put us in a valley so that we can rely only solely on him so that he can get our full attention, so that he can do what he's always promised. He, uh, he has that promise for us, and we just have to be humble enough to just surrender so that he can give it to us. And look at you now. I mean, that's what he always had for you. Yeah, it's amazing. I always tell people it's kind of like Joseph in the Bible, ironically the same name, but what the devil meant for evil, God meant for good because yeah. he took the worst thing that ever happened to me and made it the best thing. That ever happened to me. It completely transformed my life. Um, I've been sober for uh, 3,090 days today, and it's a miracle what Jesus has done in my life, almost nine years, and I, he has completely taken the desire uh, away from me to, uh, it's, it's funny, I've had back trouble in the last few years, and I'm sorry, the last few months, and and never once have I considered taking a pain pill. You know, I, I could take Tylenol or whatever, but right. I, I, I've never once considered that because it's just not an option for me. And I don't want to go down that road again. And I'm so grateful um, that, again, that what the devil meant for evil, God meant for good. And only he can do. There's some things only he can do. You know what I mean? And, yeah, and yeah. he did this. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's amazing because what it happens is as much as we in our humanity want to take uh, the, the glory for it, there's some things that you look and go, there's no way. Yeah. Like I couldn't have built this from my uh, my brokenness like but he did yeah. he did it yeah yeah and it's also so amazing because when god breaks you he breaks you to a level to where now he can trust you to do what he's always called yeah. you to do and sometimes you know if we had it uh when the things were going rosy or peachy and king uh maybe he couldn't trust us because we would get in the way of what he wanted uh for his for us to do to promote God, promote his son, Jesus Christ, and his glory. Uh, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, as you travel and as you minister to different groups and different people across the world, what satisfies you the most? I think that very thing we were just talking about, watching people that have been set free, mm -hmm. um, uh, because of our ministry, or not really because of our ministry, because of what God did for them through our ministry um, and helping other. Sometimes, you know, it's hard for an addict to have the courage to come up and say, hey, you know, God used your story to help me. But a lot of times you'll have a family member of an addict that mm -hmm. will come and tell you, you gave me hope through your story. And I think that to me is the most rewarding thing. Um, and especially with young people, we have a lot of young people that that to support our ministry and you know that has always been an amazing thing for me because you know i'm a southern gospel artist when i first started down this road they were like you know it's really this music's kind of for older people and mm -hmm. that's fine i, I want to reach as many people as i can this um kind of this growing young uh, people fan base and it, it's been an amazing thing to watch because what somebody said couldn't be done um god has has made possible and that's another big rewarding thing for me is, is definitely have, helping addicts and alcoholics and their families and then watching young people drawn to our music um, uh, because at the end of the day, it's about helping people. It's about reaching people. And it's about allowing God to do what only he can do, just like he did for me. Amen. And sometimes uh, I know you can uh, agree with this, that you may not be able to reach a young person or another person through scriptures or what the Bible is saying, but you can always reach them through a bridge of a story, a testimony, something that they can relate yeah. to. Then that opens up the Word of God, and then that way you can minister to them more effectively than to just, hey, you know, the Bible says this, the Bible says that, because that turns people off sometimes. And I really believe that our bridge to salvation for other people is your story. Absolutely. And I think that is, there's also power in music. Mm. You know, a lot of times somebody will come to a concert before they'll come to a church service. But what they don't realize is when they come to a Christian concert, it is a church service. They just don't know it until right. they get there. Right. Um, so that is the power of music. And uh, so I agree. I think God has uh, not only used the music, but my story 
to uh, open doors that, you know, no man could shut. And I, I'm just so uh, blown away and, and humbled by the opportunity and that I get to do this. And uh, thank you for, you know, just allowing me to, to share it because, you know, a lot of people I've done interviews before where they didn't they didn't want me to talk about my addiction. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I, which I understand, I guess. But man, I'm just I'm grateful to tell it wherever I go. And I tell it every night on stage, and and I'm just I'm I'm really grateful. Uh, that's uh, that's who you are, right? And then God, you, you you're overcome by yeah. uh, His blood and your testimony, right? And so uh, God has helped you. God has cleansed you. He's He's saved you. He's set you free. And now, what better way for you to go out and minister effectively in song, but to also tell them, hey, you know, I went through something. Everybody goes through something. It may not be an addiction. It yep. may not be alcohol. They may go through depression, anxiety. They may go through something else, but everybody goes through something. For you to have a story to tell, and people are now looking at you saying, wow, he made it. I can make it too. And you know what? It's, just, it's funny you say that about a depression, how some people struggle with addictions and other people struggle with depression. It is all spiritual warfare. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is all attacks from the enemy to discourage not only the believer, but the world from turning to Jesus. And, um, you know, he loves, he loves to attack God's children. He loves to attack uh, people that are trying to do the right thing. And what we have to remember is uh, we are more than conquerors through Jesus, our Lord. Yes. And, and yes. I love what you said about how we overcome him. The Bible tells us how we overcome the blood of the lamb. That's yep. Jesus. And that's first and foremost. And second is the word of our testimony. And uh, that is so important for me to tell my story because that's how I overcome. Yep. According to the scripture, that's how I overcome. It's the word of my testimony. So I share it wherever I go. And, and uh, you know, it's just a, it's an honor, man. It's an yeah. honor for me to get to tell about what Jesus can do and, and brag on him and, and to lift him up. You know, I, it's, it's amazing. I, I, I really want to encourage you. I want to, of course, thank you for joining us. Um, but I do want to encourage you because sometimes as you're out there on the road doing different things and trying to just make sure that everything is lined up for the next uh, place you're going to, uh, sometimes you're attacked as well because you're ministering the gospel. And for the young people to come, because I believe the enemy is trying to attack our younger uh, generation. Yeah. And so I want to encourage you to continue to minister to our younger generation because they are our future. And uh, there's amazing things that they're doing, creativity that we didn't even have. Uh, I'm not going to tell my age, but back in the day, as they would say. So um, I'm glad you're doing that because they need somebody um, to reach them. And I believe that you're reaching our younger uh, crowd. How can people find out more about your music, uh, what you're doing, uh, things of that nature? Social media, things. Yeah, we're on uh, Facebook, of course, uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Joseph Habedank. It's a little tricky, my name, uh, but it's J-O-S-E-P-A. It's just normal Joseph. And then Habedank is H-A-B-E-D-A-N-K. You can also go to our website, josephhabedank.com. We'd love to keep up with you. I'm on tour about 150 days a year. So wow. I'd love for you all that are watching to, to uh, come out and see us. We'll be in uh, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and uh, Dayton, Ohio, uh, up in Detroit, Michigan, Battle Creek, Michigan this weekend. And so we'd love to see you all out on the road. Or maybe when we're in Atlanta, we're in Atlanta quite a bit. So please keep in touch with us. You can also find us on YouTube and Apple Music, Spotify. Check out my music. Check out my new album. Change is coming. I think it's the most important album I've ever done. And um, man, thank you so much for just allowing me to share my story and, and uh, talk about our ministry today and most importantly, lift up Jesus. So let me ask you a question. You say you're from Dayton, Ohio. You're going back there to do ministry. I would call, I'm not going to say a concert, but I say ministry. How is that going to, how does that feel that you grew up here and now you're back there doing ministry? Yeah, you know, it's a little nerve-wracking because yeah. you'll, you'll have a lot of people show up that, that know, have known you since you were <laughs> right, a kid, right. you know, so right. it's like, how are they going to take me serious as an artist if I'm, you know, they used to babysit me or, <laughs> you know, watch me in the nursery. Yeah. But uh, it's also exciting because my brother still lives up there. I'll, I'll get to see my brother and my 
uh, my sister-in-law, my niece and nephew, and uh, the church that we're going to in, in Waynesville, Ohio, just outside of Dayton, is very uh, near and dear to our heart. And uh, it's it's just an honor, man. You know, anybody that wants me to come sing, you know, they don't have to do that. This is a special event for them. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't have to have me. They're 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 paying me to be there. And and anytime I get to be able to uh, minister. You know, it, it's just a, an honor, especially when it's somewhere that's close to your hometown. And uh, so, man, I'm just, I'll tell you what, I, I hope I don't sound like a broken record, but I, I'm just grateful. You know, I'm yeah. so grateful from where I was and uh, not too far from where I'm sitting right now was Cumberland Heights where I checked into rehab. Wow. And uh, Jesus set me free. Yeah. And so now it's just an amazing thing, man. It's yeah. an amazing thing what I get to do. I get to be in, do an interview with a guy in Atlanta that I've, never met before and uh, it's just it's just awesome man only jesus right yeah but we connect with one another because of uh what christ means to both of us and for what we're doing uh looking at christ because he is ahead of my life I, I can't do anything without god i can't do anything without jesus i can't do anything and so and i know that you feel the same yeah. way too uh so we're we're brothers in the spirit and uh, i'm honored to talk to you I am really am, and I, I thank you so much for your testimony. I have about 30 seconds left. I want you to encourage somebody who's watching. Tell you what, if you're walking through what I did, or maybe you know someone who, who does, one of the most powerful things you can do is talk to somebody. So much shame that comes with addiction and alcoholism, and um, if you'll just tell somebody, there's, four, there's a four-letter word, it's help. Sometimes you just got to ask for help. Amen. Talk to somebody. Talk to Jesus. Amen. But to talk to somebody you love and trust. Amen. Joseph Haberdank, I want to thank you for joining us. He is a Southern Gospel Album of the Year winner at the 52nd Annual GMA Dove Awards. Thank you so very much for joining us. Right now we're going to take you back to the music ministry, to the music set. Back and uh, glad I was able to talk with uh, Joseph uh, on his ministry. We talk about uh, addictions and depression and Uh, I have two gentlemen here. They're going to be doing a skit, uh, Daryl Sparrowman and Lloyd Fields. Uh, Talk to us a little bit about what you're going to do. Um, I saw it one time and uh, it was just blown away. So talk to our viewers of what's going to transpire. So a lot of times you go through loss or bad experiences and oftentimes that's exactly when the enemy comes in and he's right there to accuse you. And it sounds like your voice. You might even think, man, I'm I'm really dealing with something now, but it's the accuser of the brother and he starts speaking and there comes this point when we all need to just shut down Mm -hmm. that voice because he's trying to tear us apart. And so this sort of takes um, you through a little bit of how I even felt that at a point in time, I lost both of my parents. Yeah. And um, you, you deal with loss, you deal with suffering. And so this, this piece sort of digs into that and tries to bring some redemption there. Wow. Um, so I'm kind of looking forward to uh, seeing what God has uh, through you gentlemen uh, for this skit. What's the name of the skit? It was the worst year of my life. How can people find out more about you, too? You can email us at Words by Optic. Yep. Or you can uh, Gmail us. Yeah. Just find us on Instagram, Words by Optic as well. Absolutely. Words by Optic at gmail.com yep. or on IG, Instagram, Words by Optic. Well, I'm going to let you guys get at it and uh, be blessed by Daryl Sparrowman and Lloyd Fields. It was the worst year of my life. I lost love. I lost family. I lost myself. But I'm not supposed to be mad because I'm blessed. So God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, sir. God bless you. 
Because if I can't restrain the words and the thoughts of my mind, I'd give you a piece of my peace, but instead, I eat. Feasting on malnourished thoughts of when I'll take my last supper. Entrees of depression with suicides of inadequacy sprinkled with crumbs of a deserted heart. Hatred preparing me a table in the presence of my reflection, shoving bitterness down my throat. And as I sit here and choke, I can't tell who's holding the fork anymore. But as I look down this fork in the road, I keep taking these leftovers. I deserve to be happy. Nah, that's for white people. Or people who are married, right up until you have kids. Or people who have money who can travel, that is. I should be happy. But the happiness, happiness is, is fleeting. fleeting. If anything's misleading, it's that my flesh could be prospering, but my soul, soul could still be bleeding. bleeding. Using people like bandages. But it's the same old problem. None of them are sticking, because they're still picking and choosing, and you, you're, you're still, still losing. losing. Your time, your life, your money, still wasted. This feeling, I've already tasted this game. I've already played it. I'm tired of trying. Tired of wasting my breath. Tired of giving others my best. Because I ain't got nothing left. So I'm going to just do me. Forget about everybody else. Think about nothing. Nothing but myself. I take life into my own hands. But it's slipping through my fingers and... No Palm Sunday's going to save it, Because four of them are already gone past and still ain't even raised it. Building up just to be beat, beat down. down. Bound. Used. Misunderstood. Underappreciated. And misvalued. What, what is, is my, my value? value? Am I so cheap that no one cares? And life is cheap, no one cares. Or is love so cheap that no one bears to know theirs? Who actually cares about you? Love is a facade. Because at the first sign of a storm, those closest to you will run and tell you it was all the will of God. That your suffering must be because you sinned. But then again, who hasn't sinned? That they're still prospering while you're still choking, grasping for air. This is too great of a weight. But I wait. But my waiting seems to be producing no results. You know, it was really just their fault. These thoughts. I'm slipping into a rage. Got me feeling like, who, who can, can you, you trust? trust? The church? They throw you away when they can't use you anymore. What about your girl? Who can find a loyal woman? Because Proverbs 31 left that out. God. <laughs> Not quite. But maybe. No, that, that's not exactly right. Where was God when I lost it all? <laughs> when I was crying in my car, praying for him to make a way. It was easy. She just got up, just walked away. Love wasted. Bitterness tasted, faced in a crash course with reality. Loneliness, it found me. With no words of encouragement. Just discouragement from people's bitter judgments. And where was God when I prayed for so long? Hold up. You don't always get what you pray for. Well, you don't always get what you pay for, but I thought everything was paid for. A life of ease he never promised me or said I was made for. But what about all the blessings that I've worked for that others are reaping? Shut up! One waters, another place, but God still gets the increase. Oh, wait a minute. Is it not unfair that you're unseen? That God hides his face on you? He found me in my sin. I was lost, rolled away my stone, now I'm born again. You're still stuck in sin. That's a lie, I was freed by his blood, I got another chance. You're undeserving. <laughs> Ignorance. No repentance. <laughs> You're undeserving. It's his blood that makes me worthy. Are you worthy? I'm made deserving by the blood that came down his head, his arms, and those 39 lashes on his back. That came at a great cost. Well, look at what you've lost. What have you gained? I was set free from sin, bitterness, loneliness, and the power of his name. And now it's not about what people have done or even what they've said. Well, thanks to God, your parents are still dead. To die is Christ and to live is the same. Well, that sounds insane. What about your pain? Don't you get it? It shows that he still reigns. I'm done 
listening to the enemy's thoughts. I suggest you, you do the same. Wow. 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 <laughs> That's all you have to say is wow. <laughs> wow. Um, amazing. Yes. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And it lets us know that we cannot, as much as possibly lives within you, resist listening to the enemy's thoughts mm -hmm. and his lies. Amen. 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 Um, so we have a guest that's going to be joining us. Yes, um, yes, yes. All the way from Chicago. Uh, and we're glad for him talking with us about no, what God is doing uh, in his music career, career, and much more. Please welcome to the show, uh, Anton Gardner. Thank you for joining welcome. us. Welcome. Thank you guys for having me. Amen. 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 Talk to us a little bit about this season in your life. Um, you're doing two things, and now you're recording. And talk to us a little bit about who you are and what God is doing. Well, I'm Antoine Gardner uh, from the city of Chicago. I'm a worship leader. Um, I am currently a flight attendant as well. And so um, this season has been kind of rocky a little bit because I've been trying to manage being a flight attendant in my profession as well as being a, a worship leader in ministry. Um, but I believe that COVID kind of helped with leveling the playing field for me a little bit. So we're not out as much flying or whatnot. So I'm able to be home a lot more ministering and um, grabbing hold to a lot of the young worship leaders in my city uh, and just kind of trying to pour out what I have so that I can receive more. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So that's why it's a little chilly outside. <laughs> about that windy, about that wind and from the windy city. <laughs> so um, talk to us and share with us music. When did you know that's what God was calling you to? Um, I was five. And uh, so when I was born, I was born with uh, a disease where I wasn't able to talk. My tongue was stuck to the roof of my mouth. And so I wasn't able to utter words. Um, and my very first utterance was singing. Um, and so when my family found that out, uh, my uncle, they put me right in the junior choir. And from there, um, I started leading and, you know, developing who I was. Um, I was in leadership, I think around like 12. Um, a lot of changes happened in the church. And so I had to step up um, and take over certain spaces. And around like 15, 16 is when I really like kind of stepped in like, okay, God, if this is what you want me to do, let's do it. Let's go for it and let's press into it. And that's when I started, you know, just writing songs and trying to, develop who I am as a um, worship leader and as a psalmist. So. so you said you were born and your tongue was stuck to the roof of your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And the first words you, the first thing you uttered was a song. Yeah. Okay. Now, how old were you then? Five. Wow. Yeah. So um, my family, they prayed um, and I think I was around like three when they actually sent me into surgery to go ahead and remove it um, because it, it was a thing where it wasn't supposed to, like I wasn't supposed to be talking, I'm not supposed to be talking, I'm not supposed to be able to utter any type of sound. Um, and I think I was like five because they thought I was just going to be mute. And my mom said I just started, you know, singing. So, yeah. <laughs> Wow. And they put them right in the choir. Right in the, choir. <laughs> yeah. right in the junior choir. It's right the thing in my family. Uh, everybody, once you turn a certain age, they take you and they literally place you in the junior choir. And you're there until about 18, until you can decide on your own that you don't want to sing anymore. So. <laughs> right. uh, if you're born in this family, get right, ready. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. <laughs> Amazing. But, but that is an incredible testimony. Yeah. That is an incredible blessing. That lets us know that no matter what the doctors say, what man says, it's what God has in, in, yeah. in store. How has your testimony touched your life? In many ways, um, I've been muzzled a lot over the last several years uh, by my own self, by my own insecurities, by my own uh, depression. Um, suicidal thoughts and all of those things that kind of muzzled me. They stopped me from, I was doing ministry, but I wasn't doing ministry. I was just doing it, you know, and I wasn't being effective. I was a reprobate. Um, and knowing like, okay, you actually gave me this gift because you didn't have to. You didn't have to bring me out of that, that moment of being, not being able to talk, actually being mute for real. 
And so knowing that God kind of put me in that place, I had to, okay, get it together. Let's, let's actually do what you were called to do on the mm -hmm. earth. And so it's blessed me tremendously. It's helped me. Um, and just being able to see how I've blessed others has definitely inspired me to keep going and to keep pushing. So, and Amen. I pray that it's encouraged you and it has yeah. strengthened you. Yeah. Absolutely. He, he's, able. he's able. Absolutely. He's able. You know, it's uh, amazing. We're talking. We, we, we had the uh, interview talking with uh, Joseph about depression, addiction, and you're talking about depression and things of that and nature. Darryl and and uh, the skit was talking about that. What do you think that um, we as believers need to understand about that? as far as, you know, hey, we're, I'm going through this. And what can we do to, you know, possibly help? You know, because everybody's like, oh, we could pray or we could do that. But mm -hmm. there needs to be something else done. I believe in Jesus and a therapist. Mm -hmm. I believe that there is a, a certain thing where you can get spiritual help as well as professional help. There are people who are in those, the mental awareness like type um, spaces that are able to help you in those moments and if you don't get the proper help that you need then you will continue to struggle you will continue to silently struggle because there are a lot of people who don't speak up about it mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who don't say anything for a long time my family didn't know I was depressed they didn't know that I was dealing with what I was dealing with internally until I actually said hey walked in my brother's house and I'm like hey I want to kill myself mm -hmm. I need help Mm -hmm. And that was the moment that God himself was like, okay, now you've made this a, a thing. Now I'm going to start sending you the resources that you need. And so I think us as believers, we have to get out of this thing. Yes, we do need to pray. Yes, we need Jesus. But we also need professional help as well because there, there are God people who God, God didn't just send them to the church. There are other people outside of the church that are able to help the Christians that, you know, in the spaces that we need them to help in. So, yeah. That's good. I, I was in a class uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, and we were talking about this very same thing, about ministers being trained and, and taught to be able to help yeah. when it comes to um, mental health and the, and, and the healing of it. Mm -hmm. And it's not always in the church. Yeah. yeah, there are people that are Christians that are professionally mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. equipped to yeah. do that. So it's not a taboo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a taboo. And I think us as as a kingdom, as a church, as, as especially in a black church, I think we've demonized mental illness and we've demonized these type of things because a Christian ain't supposed to be depressed. A Christian mm -hmm. isn't supposed to do this. And so we have to kind of get out of that demon, like demonizing that moment and mm -hmm. actually pressing into, mm -hmm. OK, let's help. Let's 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 get the help that we need. So. And that's why people don't say anything. Mm -hmm. That's why pastors struggle. They don't say anything. Uh, uh, musicians, worship leaders. Yeah. Well, if I say anything, then they're going to think I don't really love God. But that's not it. That's that's a trick of the enemy. Yeah. And also, even with that, if, if you say anything, you might get put set down from your position. You might mm -hmm. get your title stripped. And I think that's a mental thing in itself. Mm -hmm. Like last year, we seen a spike in suicides within pastors that I've never seen in my lifetime ever and so I think there's a lot of things that kind of like we have to kind of derobe ourselves and, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a humbling situation for all of us mm -hmm. for sure. That's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it is because you know at times we really have to focus on what God has for us and until we're able to speak that I have this issue he can't help us. And, and once you were able to say, hey, I need help because yeah. this is what I'm struggling with, he is like, okay, now I'm ready. Mm -hmm. And everything is there. We have a couple of minutes left. How can people find out more about your music ministry and uh, things that you're doing? Uh, so currently on my social media, is my a Instagram is Antoine.Gardner, um, and my Facebook is Antoine Gardner as well. Um, my email is bookings4agm.com. Um, and if you want to just reach out or connect with me on any type of level, those will be the platforms that you'll be able to connect with me on. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for giving God your gift back. Yeah. Oh, I mean, for giving it to, well, your family made sure you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they go. Yeah. But, but thank you for giving, giving your gift so freely. Yeah. So freely to God. Yeah. That, that, that's, 
Our family can do it. My family can, <laughs> could, now this is what you're going to do. Yeah, I come from a family of singers, so it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's inevitable. Yeah, pretty okay. much. We, we have no other choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm thankful for that and um, the fact that you came and you shared your testimony with us tonight. I believe somebody's blessed and, and, and encouraged. And together, we want to say to you to be encouraged. Amen. Yeah. Continue to allow God to use you to do exactly what you're doing, Thank to you. breathe life yeah. also into those that you minister to. Right now, Kate Thompson's going to be talking with Nika Marie. All right, welcome back to Atlanta Live. And I am here with the beautiful Nikia Marie. Hello, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm wonderful, wonderful. You look fantastic. Thank you, so do you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. All right, well, you're getting ready to sing for us, but tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get started in the industry? Man, I started probably when I came out the womb, my daddy said. <laughs> he said I came out the womb singing, not crying. Not crying. Yeah, okay. that's what he told me, but he was, uh -huh. uh, he did music. Music. He played with Eddie Kendricks and The Temptations and traveled with them. So I got my musical background from my dad. Okay. Um, I'll give him his credit. I'm sure he's watching yes. and wants to make sure I do. <laughs> yes. And so I loved music just because of that. Mm -hmm. And um, my dad got saved, gave his life to Christ, and he began to pastor and do music at so many ministries and churches. And I would follow him mm -hmm. and I would go to all the rehearsals. And I just loved to see people yeah. come in in the door and they were just so excited about just the music and the sound and I was like I want to make people feel good you know I want people to feel better they they would come just looking so down and depressed but as soon as the music would hit right they would they would get really excited so that was my love for music so that's how I got started and then as I was growing up and I went to high school my dad put a studio in our basement and I recorded my first CD at that point oh wonderful yes. now did you sing at the churches uh, all uh, the time church? okay. <laughs> So you were part of praise and worship, praise and, the and choir. worship, the choir, you all were in of the youth it. choir, youth choir, children's choir, that. everybody's choir. Okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You I, probably set the standard. I, you know, a little bit, a little something. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, so you said you were influenced by the Temptations and yeah. Kendricks, you know, yeah. old school old artists. School. So, what were some of your other influences in the gospel, or you know, the Christian contemporary or this music industry? Oh mm -hmm. man, I loved Yolanda Adams. Mm -hmm. I'm a big Kiki, Kiki Sheard. Oh, uh, yeah. I love any Sheard, actually. Yeah. Um, Marette Brown Clark. Mm -hmm. I just love the Marys, Mary Mary, yes. Kirk Franklin. Uh, just, I mean, I'm just a music head. I love everyone in the gospel. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's just the good news that we're sharing. Yes. And we're all the body of Christ. We all do it our way. You know, but we're reaching people, so that's mm -hmm. the goal. So I just love how everyone's unique in yeah. their own way. I know Canton's from out here. I love Canton yes. Jones. Yes. You know, that's my brother. So okay. yeah, it's amazing. I just love all gospel artists. Okay, wonderful. Well, how would you, if you could um, designate your genre, uh, you know, or your style? Uh -huh. What would you call your style? Oh man, I would say my style is like a little pop. <laughs> pop gospel uh -huh. maybe yeah I just I love mixing genres I love you know to reach the young people I have nieces and and they just are like auntie you know we yeah. want to yeah. dance we want to have a good time right. so you know I love like the pop style jazz style so I would say that's kind of where my music okay. is. All right. And do you write your music or? Yes, you I write do? all my music. You write all of it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it comes from life, experiences. Sure. Um, the song I'm doing is Unstoppable. Mm -hmm. And um, another one, I Believe in Me, but it just a song where I was feeling like I just couldn't go on and, and mm -hmm. just letting the enemy know, my mind know that nothing sure. can stop me, nothing can hold me down, I'm unstoppable. And then believing in myself to know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Right. So yeah, I was just writing down my thoughts and then they became songs. So basically you, you know, what you're feeling inside, what you're, I guess, meditating with God yes. comes out in your music, right? Absolutely. Yes, okay, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> okay, so what's in store for you in the next few years? I mean, what do you have upcoming now? But then I want to hear about the future too, because it seems like you're going to be here for a good while. I hope yes. so. Yes. I hope so. Um, uh -huh. I have a project that is going to be called Breathe coming out hopefully okay. next year. Love that title. And yes, it's, oh, it's one wow. of my 
favorite songs. Um, we did it during COVID. We did the album during the COVID time, and it's just an exciting, exciting okay. record album. It's my favorite one. Okay. Um, I'm getting into a lot of other entrepreneur things, you know, just okay. seeing what avenues I'm going to go as far as that's concerned. But I'm just open to whatever God wants sure. to do in every season of my life. So I don't have all of the <laughs> the plan, yeah. but I know I'm walking this thing out. So, so you're just open to what God I'm wants open. to do. You Absolutely. think there'll be a fashion line in it? That's what I was open to, <laughs> sis. I'm open to the fashion. <laughs> Yes, I'm open. I know that. I, yes, that's one of the things I'm open to. So uh -huh. yes, that's work in progress. Yes. Okay, so wonderful. I'm excited about that. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Okay. Yes. And so how can people reach you uh, if they want to uh, get your music yes. or they want to book you, right? Absolutely. Okay. okay. They can reach me on uh, all Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at Nakia Marie, N-I-K-E-A-M-A-R-I-E. -E. And they can also, you know, DM me, inbox, and then okay. you can figure out how to send all the information to you. Well, thank Thank you so much for that. We're looking Thank forward you. to your next selection. Yes. We've got Nakia Marie with a selection entitled Unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. Nothing will stop you. I'm unstoppable. And you can't hold me down. It's not I can't do this sounding foolish Don't you know you're a winner And you are not a quitter Hit the button, reset Come on and change your mindset You're unstoppable Doesn't matter what I see, I'm gonna take my drink and make them reality. I know I will not fail. With God, I will prevail. And won't nobody hold me back with Him? I'm on the right track and I'm unstoppable. Oh. 
Unstoppable. Unstoppable. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Uh, Nakia. Nakia. So we want you to remember that. Tonight, you are unstoppable. The enemy cannot stop you. Don't even allow that lie to take root in your head. Amen. Go forward. Forget those things that are behind and press toward the mark and know that God has you. Amen. We're excited that you decided to tune in with us and stay yes. with us. Listen, we love you so very much. Don't forget we're educational. We're inspirational. And of course we are community. We are. We're going to take you to the music ministry. Anton Gardner, he is singing your great name. God bless. Wherever you are, I just want you to clap your hands and give the Lord glory all over this building. The song says this right here. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your to the top we're gonna say it say we love to call your name yeah we cannot explain Let it in your home, power. 